Here is the best wonder kid from every single country in this year's World Cup. Now, if you guys didn't know, every single World Cup, there's a Best Young Player Award that is given to the most promising player under 21 years old. However, some national teams don't have a youngster under 21 years old. Hence why some of the players on this list might be a tiny bit older. Anyways, let's just start things off with the host nation of Qatar. My pick for them has to be Homam Ahmed, who is a 23 year old left back from Qatari side Al Garafa. I don't really know much about him because nobody watches the Qatari league, respectfully, but I did see him at the Gold Cup last summer and he was really impressive for the Qatar national team. Ever since he was first called in, he's been a very consistent player for the country and I think he's going to play a pivotal role at this World Cup. Moving on to Senegal, I've gone for Pape Matarsar. This kid is a huge talent and he's only 20 years old. Additionally, he plays for Tottenham Hotspur, but he's gotten zero minutes so far this season. In my opinion, he should have gone alone like he did last season to Mets, where regardless of the relegation, he played 59 games, scoring five times and assisting three. He has the talent, so hopefully he shows out in this World Cup and gets a lone move in the winter because he definitely needs more playing time. Now, let's move on to Ecuador, where choosing a young player from this national team is a very difficult decision. This is because Ecuador is one of the youngest national teams participating at this year's World Cup, so there's a lot of good, talented youngsters. Some of them being Gonzalo Plata, Moises Casado, and Hing Kapi from Bayer Leverkusen. They're all great picks for this. However, for me, since I'm an avid Premier League watcher, I'm going to have to select Brighton midfielder Moises Casado. Casado for me is one of the best midfield prospects in the world, which is why reportedly Liverpool and Chelsea are keen to sign him. And in my opinion, Casado is one of the biggest, most talented Ecuadorian players ever. Now for the last team in Group A, we got Netherlands and I'm going to be selecting Ryan Gravenberch. He's a former Ajax midfielder who has just signed for Bayern Munich. At Ajax, he was balling week in and week out, but for Bayern Munich, he's barely had an opportunity to show what he's got. This is to be expected, obviously, because Bayern Munich are just a stacked team. But still though, maybe moving to Bayern Munich in a World Cup year might have not been the best idea when it comes to staying match fit and getting more minutes. Still though, we know Gravenberch has all the attributes to become a top midfielder one day. So let's see if he can prove that on the world stage. Moving on to Group B, let's go to one of the World Cup favorites, England. Now England has a lot of young talent as we all probably already know. One of their brightest talents is Phil Foden who would have been my pick, but he's now 22 years old and England have a lot of youngsters under 21, so I can't pick him. Therefore, I've gone for one of my personal favorites, Jude Bellingham. He's one of the only English players that isn't playing in England, obviously because he's playing in Germany for Borussia Dortmund. But in the Bundesliga, he's one of the best talents in the league. And overall, he's just a great midfielder and has good leadership qualities. In fact, he even captained Dortmund recently, which shows he could be a true leader. It does seem like eventually Jude Bellingham will join the Premier League because there's a lot of clubs interested in him like Chelsea, Manchester United, and Liverpool. So the fact that big clubs in England want to send Bellingham is just a testament to how good of a midfielder he is. Now let's move on to my country, the United States of America. Let's go, baby! Now the obvious choice would be Giovanni Reina, who in my opinion has the most potential to become the best American player ever. Yes, even more potential than Pulisic. But for me, in the last year, he has been too injury prone and I'm not sure the US can rely on him just yet. And I also want to be different from everybody else, so I'm going to be selecting Eunice Musa. Musa's potential is massive as well and him and Gio Reyna are going to run that USA midfielder for years to come. Anyways, a fun fact about Musa is he's actually an England youth international who switched to the US at senior level and is a starting midfielder for Valencia in Spain. Just overall though, Musa has everything, bruh. He's a good dribbler who can also finish because we all saw that goal against Atletico Madrid that was called off. That was an absolute rocket. And he drops good assists to his teammates as well. He just has all the attributes of a good midfielder. And because of Musa being more consistent in the last season compared to Gio Reyna is the reason why I selected him. He's definitely going to be a key piece in this World Cup for the US and for World Cups to come. Now going to Iran, I apologize if I butcher his name, but I'm going to be selecting Hull City striker Alayar Syed Manesh. He's a 21 year old forward and in 2018 he was named one of the top talents of the world. This season it has not been going well for him though because he recently just got a hamstring injury and he's been out for some time so I don't know whether he'll be back for the World Cup or whether he'll be in form or not but he's still going to be my pick. Now usually when people mention Iran's attack, I always think of Mehdi Taremi and Sardar Asmoon. Those two are the main forwards for the Iranian national team. But having a depth piece like Syed Manesh is really good to have. Anyways, let's move on to Wales, where this Wonder Kid pick was pretty easy. I've gone for the 21-year-old Brendan Johnson from Nottingham Forest. Now in the Premier League so far, Nottingham Forest have been very poor. But Johnson has been putting in a shift for them, getting two goals in seven games. Also last year, he helped Nottingham Forest get promoted because in 46 games, he had 16 goals and nine assists. So the talent is definitely there for Brendan Johnson. Let's see if he performs at the World Cup. Now moving on to Group C, we got Argentina and the player I selected is going to be Julian Alvarez. He's an obvious choice because the Argentinian forward is one of the top talents coming out of the country right now. He also recently joined one of the best clubs in the world, Manchester City. Now he can't officially win the best young player award because he's actually 22 years old, but as good as Argentina are right now,
now, they don't have many young talents bursting out on the scene. Therefore, I literally have no choice but to say Julian Alvarez. Now, we all know how good this guy was for River Plate because in 26 games, he's had 18 goals and 6 assists for them. And he also started off strong for Manchester City because he has 3 goals in 8 games already. So for me, he's the best young talent that Argentina have right now. Now, we got Mexico next and they have some good, decent young players as well. Now, I can't select Diego Linez because he's over the age limit of 21 and he also sucked at Real Betis. So I'm not going to be saying his name regardless. Mexico do also have that young Canadian talent, Marcelo Flores. But for me, I think that lone move to La Liga 2 side, Real Oviedo, wasn't the brightest decision. He literally hasn't done much for that team at all since he's got there. Therefore, my pick for Mexico is actually going to be Santiago Jimenez. He could have represent Italy, Mexico, or Argentina, his birthplace, but has chosen to represent Mexico instead, which makes sense because he developed at Cruz Azul. But now he plays for Feyenoord because he moved there last summer, and he's been doing great for that club right now. In the Eric Divisi so far, he's got two goals and one assist, and he also has three goals in two games in the Europa League. However, I've heard reports that the Mexico head coach, Tata Martino, is not going to select Santiago Jimenez for the World Cup squad. And I think that's just an outrageously stupid decision. Raul Jimenez is injured and has not been the same this season. Alexis Vega is okay, I guess. And Funis Mori? <laughs> So yeah, for me, Santiago Jimenez has to go to the World Cup for Mexico if they want any chance to get out of this group. Let's move on to Poland where my pick is going to be that Roma wonder kid, Nikola Zaluski. To be honest, Poland does not have many young talents coming through, so this was kind of an easy choice. Anyways, Zaluski is a 20-year-old talented left midfielder, and to be honest, I don't really know much about him, but he's already played five games so far in the Serie A this season under Mourinho, so it seems like he's got the trust of one of the most legendary managers in the world, which is a pretty tough thing to do. Now for Saudi Arabia, it's kind of hard because I don't know much about them, but I've decided to go for Firas al Buraikan, one of their only U23 players. He's a striker for Al Fateh in the Saudi Arabian League and has 11 goals and 4 assists in 27 games last season in the league, which is pretty impressive. There's not really much I can say about him except for the fact that he has the same birthday as me, May 14th. And just because of that, I'm hoping he has a great World Cup. Now, going on to Group D, we're going to start off with the World Cup winners, France. They've got some great young talent, as everybody already knows. Additionally, in the last two World Cups, the winner of the Best Young Player Award have been French players. In 2018, Mbappe won it, and then Pogba actually won it in 2014. So will a French player win it in 2022? Only time will tell. Anyways, my pick would have been Chouameni, because he's just a rock-solid midfielder, but he's 22, and France have good talent under 21, so I can't pick him. Therefore, I'm going to go for Chouameni's Real Madrid teammate, Camavinga. Now I know, Camavinga isn't a starter for Real Madrid, but he does get a fair amount of minutes, showing that Ancelotti has a clear plan for him. Additionally, he has not featured much for Deschamps' French side as well, but I think that this guy deserves a roster spot over that bum Rabio, so I hope he gets picked to go to Qatar. Moving on to Denmark, I would have gone for the obvious choice of Damsgaard, but sadly, he is now 22 years old, and Denmark do have talent under 21. Anyways, going back to topic, the player I'm going to be selecting for Denmark is going to be Mohamed Darami. Now, Darami isn't a consistent player for Denmark, even though he got some minutes in World Cup qualifying. He's in and out of the squad, so nobody knows whether he'll actually be on that final roster or not. However, for me, a talent like Darami has to be on the plane to Qatar even though he won't play much. He's an exceptional talent who showed great signs at Ajax getting 8 goals and 11 assists last season before going back on loan to Copenhagen. He's got the talent so I think he deserves the shot to show it. Now moving on to Tunisia, this was a pretty easy choice. I've gone for Hannibal Medjri. I apologize if I butchered his name. Anyways, he's definitely the most talented Tunisian player right now coming up from Manchester United's youth system. He's also on loan to Birmingham City which will be good for his development but regardless of that, he seems to be a lock for the Tunisian national team since he's been getting called up all the time recently. Next is Australia. I'm not going to lie. I don't really know much about them. I do know they have that youngster from Central Coast Mariners, Garan Kual, who just turned 18 and has already signed for Newcastle. He also recently made his national team debut in a friendly against New Zealand. And for me, him being a late addition to the Australian squad shows that he might be in contention to be on that plane to Qatar. I don't think he's going to be a starter for Australia just yet, but I definitely think they should bring him along for the World Cup. Now let's go to Group E, where for Spain, it's going to be a super easy pick. It's got to be Pedri, who despite being only 19 years old, is already one of the best players on Barcelona and on the Spanish national team. For me, he's a generational talent who can fill the boots that Xavi and Iniesta left. He's a complete midfielder who does very well on both the defense and the offense. Barcelona and Spain have a real gem on their hands, and he could be the actual winner of the Best Young Player Award as long as Spain does well at the World Cup. Moving on to Germany, this is also a pretty easy pick. I'm going to have to go with the attacking midfielder from Bayern Munich, Jamal Musiala. Musiala is rated one of the best young players in the world 
single, if not the best young player in the world. He plays a crucial role for Bayern Munich and is pretty much a starter for them at the age of 19. And in the Bundesliga alone this season, he already has five goals and three assists in seven games. Having stats like that at the age of 19 is simply sensational. England messed up big time by letting a talent like this switch from them to Germany because a midfield duo between Musiala and Bellingham could have been deadly. Now we got Japan, which is my second national team. And no, I'm not Japanese at all, but I love anime and manga. And Japan's the number one country I want to visit, so yeah, I do have a soft spot for them even though they slapped up my real country USA 2-0. Anyways, the best young player for Japan has to be Takefusa Kubo. Even though it feels like he's been on the scene for a long time, he's still only 21 years old. He's a good left footed winger who has tricky skills and great pace. He's been bouncing from La Liga clubs going from loan to loan from Real Madrid. However, he has finally decided to settle down and leave Real Madrid to join Real Sociedad. And in six games so far in La Liga, he already has one goal and one assist. He was one of the most hyped up players in Japan a couple years back and that talent still hasn't disappeared. So let's see if he can show that talent on the world stage this winter. We got Costa Rica next and I actually visited this country this previous summer and I had a lot of fun. There's beautiful weather, beautiful beaches, beautiful women. <laughs> I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Anyways, the next crop of young players from Costa Rica isn't the best, but the one that sticks out the most to me is Brandon Aguilar. He's on loan from Nottingham Forest and is currently at Costa Rican league club Guanacasteca. To be honest, all I remember from him is him doing really well against the United States in World Cup qualifying, and he's on loan from a Premier League club, so he has to be good, right? So yeah, that's all I kind of know about him. My bad. Anyways, let's move on to Group F, where we're going to start with Belgium. Now this is between two young Belgian players. Charles de Quetelaer, who just got his move to AC Milan and balled out last season or Jeremy Doku who is the brightest talent from Belgium but has been dealing with injuries for the past season. My pick though is still going to be Jeremy Doku just because he's been on the scene for longer and the talent hasn't disappeared even though he's had injury problems all of last season. He plays for Ren currently and hasn't shown that same level of skill and explosiveness like he did at Anderlecht but that's because of his injuries not because of his lack of talent. Hopefully his body pulls it together for the World Cup in Qatar because I really want to see him impress the world just like he did at the Euros last summer. Anyways let's move on to Croatia where it's going to be another easy pick as going to be Guardiol. He's a 20 year old center back who plays for Leipzig and he almost went to Chelsea for 90 million euros. Paying 90 mil for a defender? Yeah, that's how you know Guardiol is a great center back. Anyways, he's a very consistent player and is a good ball playing CB as well, which is good in today's game. He consistently gets called up for Croatia and always starts for RB Leipzig as well. So yeah, this is a no brainer pick for me. Now moving on to Canada, we got the easiest decision in the video. It has to be Alfonso Davies. And yes, I know Jonathan David is the best striker in CONCACAF, but Alfonso Alfonso Davies is the best player in CONCACAF, so that doesn't matter at all. This guy's still only 21 years old and he's been a consistent star for Bayern Munich for years now. He's also one of the best left backs in the world and has good technical skills and pace to haunt national teams at this World Cup. Now to Morocco, the easiest choice would have to be Hakimi, but he's 23 years old now and Morocco actually has talent under 21, so I can't pick him. Therefore, I have to go with the Barcelona product, Abdes Samad Ezalzuli, otherwise known as Abdi. I probably butchered that name, my fault. Anyways, he's a dual national with Spain. However, he was called up for the first time to Morocco in the latest September camp and played for the Lions. And after playing with them in the last international window before the World Cup, it seems like he'll definitely be on that plane to Qatar. So although none of us have seen much of Abdi, we all know he has the talent. So let's see if he can show it in the World Cup. Now going on with Group G, I could have gone for another easy pick in Vinicius Jr. However, Brazil have a plethora of talent under 21 years old and Vinicius sadly turned 22 this summer, so I can't pick him. Therefore, I'm going to go for his Real Madrid counterpart, Rodrigo. We all probably know Rodrigo, man. He was the one who spearheaded the comeback against Man City, getting two late goals and helping Real Madrid win the Champions League. Additionally, he's the one who scored against Atletico Madrid, which led him and Vinicius Jr. to dance on them in their stadium. Anyways, Rodrigo is a young talent who has been getting calls to Brazil, so it does seem like he'll be on that World Cup plane. And also, him and Vinicius could lead the lines for years to come. Moving on to Serbia, even though he's over 21 years old, I have no choice but to go for Vlahovic. Not only is he the best Serbian talent, he's one of the best young strikers in the world alongside Erling Haaland and dare I say it, Darwin Nunez. <laughs> Also, Vlahovic has been one of the bright spots in this very poor Juventus team. And in six games so far in the Serie A, he already has four goals. He also has eight goals and 16 appearances for the Serbian national team. So him alongside Mitrovic could be deadly this winter. Now going over to Switzerland, I don't really know much about the young players coming through there. None of the young players right now have that same media shine that Shakiri and Xhaka got those years back. Regardless, I'm gonna have to go for the 22 year old Salzburg midfielder Noah Okafor. He's killing it for Salzburg right now, having seven goals and two assists in 13 
16 games so far. And he's getting called into the Switzerland national team, so it seems like he'll definitely be on that plane to the World Cup. Nothing more needs to be said, he's a good player that can do the job. Next up, we got Cameroon, and I'll be honest, I don't really know much about the national team, but they do have that one 21 year old center back, Christopher Wu. Post smoke. So although he's age eligible to win this award for Cameroon, if Cameroon even do well at the World Cup, he's not that exciting of a talent that I want to talk about. Therefore, I decided to go for a 23 year old player, but a talented one, Brian Embuemo for Brentford. Now, Embuemo has been representing France in his youth career, but recently he made the switch to Cameroon right before the World Cup. With this switch, it only can pretty much guarantee that he will be on that plane to Qatar for the Cameroonian national team. And I think this is the right move for Embuemo because he's not good enough for the French national team, but he's more than good enough for the Cameroonian one. However, as of right now, he only has one appearance for the national team, but I'm sure he'll ball out in Qatar this winter. Moving on to the last group, Group H, we're going to start off with Portugal. Now, this could be an easy one if I bend in the rules just like I did with Cameroon. Rafael Liao is the most hyped at young player, but he's 23 years old already. And João Felix also exists, but he's already 22. And this time, I decided to honor the 21-year-old or younger rule. So therefore, I decided to go for Noon Mensch from PSG. The left back has been a starter for PSG despite only being 20 years old, and he's doing great in Ligue 1. He's holding his own, and with the guidance of experienced center backs like Sergio Ramos and Marquinhos, I'm sure he can be one of the best left backs in the world a few years down the line. Next is Uruguay, and they have plenty of young players. They got Valverde, Darwin Nunez, and even Araujo, who is probably going to miss the World Cup, sadly. However, all those stars are over 21 years old, so I can't pick them. Therefore, I'm going to go for the defensive midfielder stud, Manuel Ugarte from Sporting. There's not much pizzazz around him. He's just a solid CDM that could do the business, and he's consistently good, so I guess there's that. Now, for South Korea, I have no choice but to go for 23-year-old forward from Freiburg, Jung Woo Young. This guy used to play for the Bayern Munich Academy for a few years, so you know he's talented. Obviously, Bayern gave up on him, but Freiburg didn't, and they picked him up. And ever since then, he's been doing well for the club since. Now, I don't know how much he's going to be playing for South Korea, considering he's only played for the country nine times and has to battle for places against Hyung Mi Sun and Hwang Yi Chan. He's still a talent that everyone should keep their eyes on. Last but not least, we got Ghana. This one is pretty difficult because they do have a top 18-year-old talent, Isihaku Fatawu, who was really impressive in the World Cup qualifiers. But right now with Sporting, he has not been playing consistently enough, and he's only had three appearances this season. Therefore, even though he's over 21 years old, I have to go for Mohamed Kudus from Ajax. I just have to. This kid was one of the brightest youngsters a couple years back. But because of his injuries, the hype around him died down. However, this season, he seems to have been reborn, and he scored some crucial goals for Ajax this season, like that one Champions League banger against Rangers, and a top corner screamer against Liverpool, which was Ajax's only shot on target in that game. Anyways, Kudus is a top talent, and he's one of my personal favorites that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on. And trust me, Mohamed Kudus is going to be a star in football. Anyways, let me know down in the comments whether you agree with me on who I think is the best winner kid from each country in the World Cup. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and also remember to hit the notification bell, because it'll notify you whenever I drop a banger video. And also leave a like, let's try reaching 250 likes this video. Also follow my Twitter at Nabuto. I would seriously appreciate it. I'm kind of lonely. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.